pause. So for our quiz review, let's take this guy out. I'm going to go full screen, and I'll tell you exactly what you're going to be quizzed on today. You will have three of these simplifying square roots, and they're each worth two points. So I think what you might want to do for these is to put in a middle column, go like this, oops, sorry. Draw a middle column here, and let's put our perfect squares in there. You can use this on your quiz. So let's go do our two times two, and our three times three, and our four times four, and our five times five, our six times six, seven times seven, eight times eight, nine times nine, 10 times 10, 11 times 11. If you need more, create them on your calculator. But if that's right, go right down the middle column so that you have them to use for your quiz. All right? And on your for your test, I think we'll make a note card. If I start it tomorrow, I think we'll get this note card that's kind of flowing throughout the chapter because there's going to be a lot to put on it. Uh, we'll just write them on there. You don't need to memorize them. All right, so remember you're looking for the biggest one that goes into 80. So you don't start here because you you might not get the biggest. You just need to don't need to look past halfway. I mean, you could start at 64, but it's not going to go in there because the least something can go into something twice. <laughs> so I would start looking that way. Okay, and I know you know 36 doesn't go into 80, but maybe there's one on your quiz where you're not sure. So you go to halfway and you just start trying until you get a what? Oops, I accidentally hit a negative. Until you get a what? Well, yeah, because until you get a nice whole number. So you can just go ahead and work your way. You, I know a lot of you know 25 doesn't go into 80, but there might be a bigger number on your test or quiz. So when you try 16, and again, we're working this way so we don't miss the biggest. I will tell you some people in my last hour, there's one of them. I just started grading them, but some are missing the biggest in one of them because they're not taking my advice and working. Draw yourself an, oh, an arrow. Draw yourself an arrow because you know you're not looking down. You're going up to find the biggest. So when you do the 80 divided by 16, that's when you know you found the biggest one, and the biggest one would be 16. So what we'll do is we'll break it into the square root of 16. We'll write that first and the square root of 5. This is the one you know it's root. It's not 8. If I wanted you to cut it in half, I'd have you cut it in half. But this is square root, so we're going to put a 4 right here. Don't make the 4 a 2. A 4 is a 4. The square root of 4 is 2, but 4 is 4. What's 4? 4. <laughs> the next one, you guys go do it. Look, I'll just pause the video. If you act, I'll let it run. It won't take very long. You want to find the biggest perfect square in 500. I think there's three of those that go into 500, but we want the biggest one. And again, take out your calculator, and don't start with four, start at the high end and go backwards. And a bunch of you are done. What did you find in there? She gave me the answer, which is awesome, but we're gonna show both steps because these are worth two points on your quiz. One for that, and then one for her answer of 10, and square root of 5, nobody knows. It goes on forever and it never ends. How many got that one? Okay. I know I did. Thank you. All right. And then you're going to have three factors. They won't be these. Um, there will be two like this. Um, sorry, if you're watching the video, I'm pointing at that one. And there'll be two like this. What do you notice is the difference between them? Carson. When I say two like this and two like this, there's a major piece added on here. Oh, that's one of the differences, the signs. But even, so yes, I will take that, but that's, yes. So yeah, that six in front of that X yeah. is like making it a little bit challenging. <laughs> More challenging. Our yeah. English is working for you. Okay, so <laughs> let's go put a one there. There'll be two where you won't see a number up front which means it's one, and you're right, it is less challenging because there's only one way you can get x squared. So you kind of get to start before you even have to start thinking. And then Dante mentioned the signs, and those are always helpful too because if I need to multiply to equal a negative, I can't have two positives, I can't have two negatives, I need one of each. So those are less challenging because you get half of it without even really having to use your brains, right? So then, Izzy, what I'm going to do is grab 
is 18, and I'm going to ask myself, how can I multiply to equal 18? And maybe somebody would say 6 and 3. I'd say maybe. Where do I look to see if that's my correct pair? I see if there's any way I can get them to add up to a negative 7. And I was like, uh-uh. So then I try 2 and 9, because that's even. And I ask myself, is there any way for me to get these to add up to negative 7? The answer is yes. Right? And you're nodding at me, Alex. Make sure you make sure they add up to negative 7. So we do a minus 9 and a plus 2. There'll be three of those on your quiz. They're each worth two points. The quiz grand total is 20 points. All right? Then there's two of this kind over here. And like Sawyer said, this is more challenging -er <laughs> because it leads in a 6. So you really, the only thing you get for free without having to use much of your brain is that, which is basically keeping an empty set of stuff, right? So we have to go up here and we have to say, well, there's two ways I could get that 6x squared. I could choose, and I would choose to be a little obvious for the first because that's usually it, right? So what do I mean by that? Yeah, the 3x and the 2x. If that doesn't work, I'll try 6x and 1x. But I'd like to try that pair first. Same with 10. I'm going to try 5 and 2 first. If that doesn't work, I'll try 10 and 1. All right? So then what I do, and unfortunately as a video, you can't see me doing this, but I'm grabbing my fingertips, and I'm just grabbing these first two, like this. I'm trying to do it for the video, but it's way first. But and I multiply 3x times 5, and I get a 15. And maybe you want to write it over here, too. Okay? I can have a 15 paired with a 4. You're going to stop and ask yourself, can I get an 11 out of those? If the answer is no, I would swap and do the 6 and the 10. But the answer is what? Yeah, so we just got lucky because we missed out. They told me to do 3x and 2x, and I said I want to do 5 and 2 first. So we got lucky, but I can't just throw them in there. So I now know that my winning pair is the 3x and the 2x. Those I can throw in. I have to make sure I create a 15 when I do firsts, outsides, insides, lasts. I never multiply the 2 in front of me. So I, I don't want to put my 5 right here. It needs to get multiplied by the 3. My 3 is on the outside, so I'm going to put a 5 here and 2 here. And then we have to decide on those signs. Okay? I need to have more positives because I need to add up to 11. So I need that 15 to be positive on the outside and the 2 to be negative on the inside. If you finish your quiz early and you're not quite sure your signs are correct, what could you do to check your factor? Foil. Exactly, Mike. So you might want to write yourself a note. Check by, definitely on a test I would, foil. And if you're like, I don't know what she means by that, if Maddie finishes early and she's like, mm, I'm a little funky on my signs for factoring, she should just go first, outsides, insides, last. And make sure she gets the original back. 6x squared is 4. These two together is a score. They make a positive 11. And my minus 10 is there. If it didn't work, she probably needs to fix the signs. All right. So our last one was yesterday's biggie, the quadratic formula. You're going to want to write it down. You don't need to memorize it. All right. Are you with me yet, bud? Here we go. X equals. Right? It is neat as possible. We'll eventually put it on a note card, but not today. All right, x equals the opposite of b, as neat as you can, plus or minus, let's do what, a big square root, in parentheses b squared, minus 4 in parentheses a, in parentheses c, I don't know why it's putting the middle of the box in the squared, all over 2 times nice and slow. Maybe put that in a big box so when you're taking your quiz, you've got that map right there nice and big. Now it's just a matter of plugging stuff in and using your calculator again. Okay, so I'm going to say x equals, and now I need to pick off my a and my b and my c. a is this lead term, right, equals 6. b, take the sign with you, my b is a positive 11, and my c circle it there, is the negative 11. I would pull them off onto the test. Am I going 
going too fast. Is that alright? Am I good? Good? Alright. So let's go take the opposite of B. B is an 11. We're going to return the negative 11. Plus or minus. We're going to put down a big root. We're going to put parentheses down and we're going to square our B, <coughs> which is an 11. Then we're going to do minus. Four parentheses A, parentheses C. We're just stuffing them in. Don't forget that's a negative 10. All over 2 times your A. So you do 2 times 6, which is 12. Now I hear all the calculators pushing because that's exactly what you do. You go to your calculator. I mean, you don't have to do it all on your calculator. When the numbers get big, I would. Be like, hey, do you know 11 times 11 is 141? You know, that's great. But I'm going to show you in case the numbers are huge. We go under the root. So you might want to, we're going to switch it to a quiz pretty soon. You might want to bracket this off and write use help. And I'm also going to have you write something else. Should be nice. So I'm going to go to my calculator. The first thing I'm going to hit is that parenthesis. And I would just do it on all of them, even though you only need it when things are negative. I would just do it all the time. Just write your initials. Otherwise, you're going to forget it when they are negative. So I would lock and load that in parentheses. By the way, those of you using this TI-80s, make sure the subtraction is the bigger one. So you might want to make this subtraction symbol here really big, and then this is a negative. Sometimes we mix those up. So we need to subtract and then parentheses. Sorry, I forgot my four. And then a four parentheses. In the parentheses, there's a six. Close it. And now it's a negative 10. That's the small one. Just to make sure we're working our calculators correctly. If this is not nice, what do I mean by is not nice? In algebra 2, it's not going to always be nice. But for us, it's going to be nice. We're not going to get decimals. We're not going to get ugly roots. What do I mean by if this is nice? Perfect square. Perfect square. So you need to go to your calculator and square root it. I'm going to rewrite the problem, though. Okay, so I have negative 11 plus or minus. I have not rooted that. I'm going to go, oh, crap. If I go to my calculator and take the square root of 361, and I get a decimal. What that means is I made some sort of an arithmetic error, or my B is off, or my C is off. So is this a nice number? I actually don't have it memorized that high, so I, I need to go to my calculator and do the square root, second root of 361. I pray that it works out nicely. Thank you. A nice 19. What if I got 19.432986? It did something to me. Right? But we're, we're being very methodical with this one because we're only doing one. It's going to take a while. So I have my negative 11 plus or minus. It's root with beautiful all over 12. There's a lot to work on your to see. And then we said you go up and then you go down. So on your calculators or in your head, you're going to take that negative 11. You're going to branch up 19. Negative 11 plus 19 is an 8. You're going to divide it by 12. You'll be happy with that. Either on your calculator or in your head. Take a 4 out of both. One answer is two-thirds, and then you're going to say, now I'm going to go down 19. Negative 11 down 19 would be what, a negative 30, right? 12, and I told you guys how to use your calculator if you need to, because the, the point of this lesson isn't simplifying fractions, so you don't want to get it wrong, because that's if you want to, you just go negative 30, and then you hit divide by 12, don't hit enter, hit math, and then tell it, fraction, fraction. Negative five half. Or do it. That one's so small. But if you get a big one, do negative five half. Any questions before we quiz? Or should we guys keep going? I'm hoping we're almost done. I'm feeling it takes a while. Do you think so? I am. All right. So I'm going to pause this.